Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, hopefully the audio quality is a little bit better because we got the microphone on, um, but the video quality might be a little bit subpar because we're using the computer. Um, still figuring out how I could connect the microphone to phone. So TBD on that front. Um, and thank you guys again for, you know, voting for the podcast. I'm super excited to start that and my goal or vision for it is that there's going to be a combination of really short quick tips on health wellness mindset things i'm reading consuming and then every so often um, there will be longer form uh, conversations with people that are around me uh, because i have constantly found myself being inspired and motivated and learning from those people. Um, and it was actually on a recent conversation with some of my Stanford alums that I thought, you know, these conversations bring so much wealth and knowledge because there's a lot of insights into how to optimize your performance when you're actually in college and when you're playing and going through those struggles. But not so much about what happens afterwards and how you navigate all of those changes and challenges that come up in the real world. Um, so that was kind of my thought process there. Anywho, today's For the Coaches is simply about how to navigate shooting drills for goalies. And this is so, so important. And I really hope that coaches listen to this and share it. Uh, because the way that you frame a shooting drill for your goalie can really make or break uh, their performance in it. And at the end of the day, you know, why, why are we doing a shooting drill? We're doing a shooting drill for the attackers. We, we know this. But then there's this also component of mental toughness building and, and developing that mindset, um, the mindset skills for goalies. And it is an awesome drill to actually practice those those practices that goalies have been using and put them to the test and see what is working for me what is not what do i need to change up in what i'm doing and you really cannot get a better drill to do that in than a shooting drill where is the most challenging not only with how the shots are coming at you but with the simple amount of repetitions coming at you as well so i i absolutely think goalies should be in them um i think one, there, there, you know, there are some parameters that I think coaches can take into account uh, when setting these up. First of all, which is the setup itself. Um, I think absolutely you should set up some cones, set up some kind of boundary where the shooters um, cannot cross so that they really are not just simply coming down, shooting two feet in front of the crease every single shot. So you know, the more realistic you can set these up for your goalies, give them at least a chance to make the save, that's gonna be helpful. The other thing is really pushing your kids to really look at the goalie because that's the whole point of the shooting drill is for you to get your attackers in the habit of seeing where the goalie is and then putting it to where the ball where they are not. Um, it is one thing if a goalie is kicking their foot out, they make a split kick save, that's one thing, goalie getting hit. It's another thing when like goalies are constantly getting hit in the chest, in the legs, you know, they're they're aiming right inside the goalie's frame. You know, that is not ideal, especially if they're not throwing a fake in. Like, you, I mean, you know, you got to work on that. Um, but putting more emphasis on that, um, you know, and that's going to be a mental challenge. Honestly, you as a coach can help your attackers work through how they work through and cope through that, just like the goalies are working through their side of the ball. But anyways, back to the goalies. Um, a really important thing here is that not only are they going to be utilizing some kind of, you know, mental skill or strategy that they've been working on, um, you know, certainly ha happy to go into more on some practices your goalies can specifically utilize in those cases. But another important thing here is that you're framing the situation or the drill and setting expectations for the goalies because they cannot go in with the same expectations they would in any other drill. 
a kid is going to go in and they're going to think their their job is to simply save the ball like they always do all the time and this is where the problems come in because they have the same expectations during a normal game situation um, whether it is a game or another drill and they're just not the same at all so it's your job as the coach to go in there and set the frame for them so when I'm going into a shooting drill I the best thing I can tell goalies is to try to pick something out of your game that you want to work on and really focus on it. Um, and and although it's counterintuitive, to not worry so much about the saves because this accomplishes two things. One, it keeps your goalie engaged and focused on a certain parameter of success, something that is controllable for them, not necessarily how the shot is coming or the setup of the drill or anything like that. The second thing is it keeps them mentally engaged. And that's a point too. You want to keep your goalies fresh because if your goalie starts getting dejected, they simply stop trying. And then that is literally defeating the entire purpose of the drill, right? You want your attackers to get shot on by the best version of your goalie or by a very capable goalie. Um, and so that is why I say, you know, we're going to we're going to approach this where not only is the goalie getting something out of it because we're working on that muscle memory, working on that mind body connection um, and, and we're not getting so caught up in these goals that are going in. I think there's absolutely a time and a place to, you know, really harp on that save percentage and how many saves you're making versus not. But for me, that's really a great time as a coach that I'm going to really work on those movement patterns and getting good reps knowing that they're feeling that pressure and that same kind of intensity that they're going to feel in a game because they want to make the saves. So again, it's just it's just helping with some of that transfer and learning um, of those movement patterns. Um, the last thing that I would say is to really try to see how your goalies are responding to the situation. And if there's a point in time where you have to pull the goalie out because they're in there too long, depending on you know what your goalie situation looks like. If you have one or multiple, just make sure they're rotating a lot, um, You know, talking to them when they come out. Um, I think a lot of times it's really easy in goalie drills for, or shooting drills for goalies to start getting in their head. And if you can say a quick like, hey, so-and-so, like make sure you reset, do whatever you need to do, et cetera just to kind of cut down on the downtime and, and give them that little reminder to reset themselves, that's gonna be huge. Um, I also have seen personally um, with you know goalies getting hit or whatever else, goalies can get really frustrated by that. So that's another really big learning point or um, pausing moment for you as a coach to really step in and help change the trajectory of your goalie in that drill. So I've been in there where, in a situation where my goalie was getting super frustrated by a shooting drill, both mentally um, and like, you know, very much verbally outwardly, you could tell she was getting frustrated. And then again, was was frustrated, but also feeling dejected. It was like a whole hot, hot mess of emotions in there. And then teammates are picking on the vibe, right? I think you, you all can imagine what's going on right now. And so, what I did is I just pulled her to the side and, and we had a conversation and again, setting the, setting the stage here, setting the frame and simply saying, Hey, you know, I know this is a very difficult drill for you to go through. Know your teammates, you know, these little reminders, your teammates aren't purposely trying to hit you. If you need a second step out, you can take it. I understand where you're coming from. I know this is not your favorite thing, but this is going to make you better. All I care about is X, Y, and Z, that you're doing X, Y, and Z, and you're helping your team get better. You know, all these things, they just need to be emphasized, especially at the younger levels. Um, you know, this m probably is not going to be an issue at the highest levels, um, but I mean, I still think setting the frame and, and setting the stage is, is important, um, no matter what level you're at, um, because having a focus for these uh, can be incredibly helpful because you're, you're in these situations most of the time where you're really only expected to save or in my eyes, these are what I could I would consider unsavable shots. So they're really looking for that 20 to 30 percent in these situations um, where, again, typically they're used to thinking about they need that 50 um, so it's, it's really all about how the drill is set up, 
how you're framing it from the beginning and then how you help your goalie work through the drill itself to ultimately help your goalie not only improve throughout the drill but then change their total framework on how they see shooting drills where they might have hated them before and automatically they're like oh i don't want to do this which may also change their effort in the drill to now maybe they look forward to the shooting drill what a concept a goalie looking forward to it um i definitely would not have thought that when i was playing um but hey maybe if this was the approach it would have been different so I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Until next time, talk to you later. Bye.